Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's session, which is Google Forms Advanced. Um, off the back of the feedback that you've been submitting um, on a regular basis for the previous sessions, um, we've been asked to give something a little bit more advanced. So we're going to have some fun this afternoon looking at different sections of Google Forms, how we can use response validation, and then how we can use those to create digital breakouts, like virtual escape rooms. And you might have noticed in the calendar invite that was updated just probably about an hour ago, there's a link in there to an example Google breakout that you're welcome to have a go at. Um, but we're going to walk through that now, and I'm going to show you, first of all, how it works, and then secondly, how you create it as well. Um, so all of those things we're going to go through this afternoon. And then tomorrow afternoon, just a, a bit of an advance warning, we've got Dean Stokes from Google coming along to join us for a, a Q&A session there. And then also on Friday morning, it will be an opportunity, again, open Q&A for all of us innovators, for you to ask um, whatever you want um, from us and, and look at our different approaches for achieving some of the things that you might want to achieve. So I'm going to jump out of the presentation now and I'm going to take us to our Google Drive. Now, I've already set up a workspace, which we're going to learn up, uh, sorry, learn about later on, um, probably next week. Um, and I've got all of my information for this afternoon and next week all hidden in, um, sorry, all selected in one place. So I'm going to open that and I'm going to go to our advanced forms demo. And this is going to open up into a Google, Google form that I started earlier on today. And I've just got two questions in there at the moment. So much like Dave took us through yesterday, just added a question. Uh, and in this case, chose it as a short answer and then added another question. And this one was a multiple choice. OK. Now, this first one, I've just realized that I haven't marked that as a required question. And I want this to be filled in by every student, this question. So I'm going to make that a required question. And it means they can't skip on without completing that. And this is a form that I might give to a group of students who've been working together on a particular project. And the first thing I want them to do is to tell me how well their group cooperated. Now, I could make that something like a linear scale, and I could choose that. Um, the lower end of the scale as being we nearly left the room to the top end, we love each other. We can have any scale we like, or we can just make that to poor, or, and then we can make that to excellent, and we can change it around however we want. If you're a bit like me and you don't like leaving the middle ground, you can also change that scale at any point to make it so that there isn't one where they can sit on the face and not uh, sit on the fence and decide one way or the other. So you can do that as a linear scale if you want to, or you could do it as a multiple choice. So you could just have poor, satisfactory, good, excellent down there. Or if you did do it as a short answer, there is a way to guarantee that you get the right sort of answers. So you might accept here um, them to free type, but down in the three dots on the bottom right hand corner next to where it says required, we've got the option for response validation, okay? The description lets us describe, decide and give a description for the students and what we want them to do. But the response validation enables us to specify exactly what we want. So I would like from these guys a number that is between one and four. And a custom error text that says, must be one to four. And I make that the question. So it's virtually working along the same top, same lines as the actual um, linear scale, but you've got a bit more control over it. You might then decide to put in your description that one is low and four is high, for example. So you can recreate if there's not a custom made section there for you. Equally, you can have this mean that it's got to be a text that contains certain things. So if you're collecting email addresses, for example, you can make sure that it's a valid email address. And if it's not, it will send an error like this isn't a valid email address. So it looks for the, for the ampersand uh, and a, and a gen general email um, end line. You can also have it maintaining a URL or that doesn't contain certain things. So if you're collecting information and you want it to be gender specific, uh, sorry, non-gender specific, you could say that responses can't, uh, can't contain his or her, for example, and it would reject those and make them type something different. So lots of different options with text. 
Also with length, you can put a character count on there. So a maximum, maximum number of characters so that people don't write too much and also a minimum number so that they have to write enough and they can't just say because he's good or something along those lines. So you could just choose a minimum number and say that they must write at least 15 words, uh, 15 characters or um, 100 characters or that they mustn't write more than 500 characters, for example. And if you tried to do that, it would prevent you from submitting the form. OK, so you've got all of those options. And you can also have a regular expression in there, like must match, for example. So whatever happens in here, for example, if it said one, two, three, four, five, it would match that exactly. It would allow you to submit the question. So lots of different options you can do with these questions. But I'm going to leave mine as that. How well did your group cooperate? And they're going to give one is low, four is high, a short answer text. And the response validation is going to say, because I changed it, that they must give a number between one and four. And there must be one to four as our custom um, error text. Then underneath it, I've got what group were you in? And I had four groups, the aardvarks, the beavers, the cats and the dolphins. Um, but not all of the groups did the same work. So what I might want to do here is split my form. And the way I can do that is to add a section. So I'm going to come to the, the toolbar here, which Dave talked us through in a previous video, and I'm going to add a section. And that section there is going to be A and B, because this is the section that's going to be filled in by the aardvarks and the beavers. Now, we noticed that the sections brought that question in. Uh, and I really wanted the section to be above that. So where these six little domino dots are, I could just drag this up oops, into the next section. And unfortunately, it's gone too high there, so I'll just move it around. And you can just pick these up and move them however you like, okay? So this is gonna be my aardvarks and beavers section. And then I want another section as well. And it's done the same thing again, typical. Let's just move that up there. There we go. And this is going to be called, actually, let's make that the aardvarks, aardvarks and the beavers. And we'll make this one the cats and the dogs. Okay. And the reason for that is because the two different groups have done different things. So what I'm going to do with this section is I'm going to add a question, which is just going to be a, a, a fairly straightforward question. What challenged you most? And I'm going to make that a short answer question that they can reply with their own text. OK, and then I'm going to add a second section. Which is going to be, did you come across? Any problems? If so, what were they and how did you solve them? And for this, I'm going to give them a paragraph option so that they can go into a little bit more detail. So that's what I'm going to ask the aardvarks and the beavers. With the cats and the dogs, their work was a little bit differentiated because they're not our higher attainers. So I'm still going to ask them what challenged you most. So one of the things I can do is duplicate that question and then just drag it down into that section. So what challenged you most is now in there. And the second question for them is if you need oops, if you needed help, what was it with? So they may have been students that need a little bit more information. Again, I'm going to make it a paragraph answer. This one is required question. We can see it's a required question because it's got the, the asterisk. This one isn't a required question because they may not have needed any help, but it's there as an option. So now what I want is the form to split based on which group they're in. So the way I can do this is to go into this question here, come down to the three dots and go to section based on answer. OK, so if somebody selects the question as uh, the answer aardvark, they will go to section A and B. If they select beaver, they'll go to section A and B. If they select cats, they'll go to C and D. And if they select dolphins, they'll go to C and D. So at this point, anyone who ticks aardvarks or beavers will come to this section here on AB. And anyone that ticks, um, ticks cats and dolphins 
will come through to C and D. OK, we will notice at the end of section two here, though, the A and B section, it says continue to next section, which would take us to C and D. And we don't want that. So after the uh, aardvarks and the beavers have completed their questions, they're going to go to submit form. And then the final question always goes to submit form. Now, as Dave showed us before, that's our form pretty much ready. We can go up to our um, settings cog, make sure that we're collecting email addresses if we want, and we've got it limited to the Academy Enterprise Trust. We could limit it to one response if we wanted. We might on this occasion let them edit it after submit if they later on solve a problem. We might choose to say, thanks for your group work today. We can customize the message. And we would save that. And then we could either send it using the send button or what I tend to do is I go through and preview, see what my form looks like and then run a test on it to make sure it's all working how I want it to. So it's collecting my email as it is there. Uh, I'm going to say that my group cooperated pretty well and we were beavers. So that's taken me through to section A and B. What challenged us most was the online learning. And did we come across any problems? I'm going to say Wi-Fi access uh, and submit. And you'll notice that I haven't seen the questions for C and D. If I submit another uh, response, I might say one, and it was the cats. And because I've clicked cats, it's gone through to C and D. And I'm going to say cooperating is what challenged us most. What did we need help with? Um, listening to each other's ideas for example and we can submit that if i go back to my main form i've now got my responses in there i've got my summary going here so i can see straight away what people are finding easy and finding more difficult and i can also see if i want to as dave did yesterday i can create a spreadsheet and move it all through into there so that's how we might create a section um, and then use response validation to determine where we go in the form and what kind of answers we give. And that gives us a, a great advantage to be able to create um, digital breakouts. So this is a digital breakout that I've created before. And I'm just going to take us, first of all, to the student view of this. Uh, and like I say, if you want to have a go at it, you can do. Some of the other innovators just about managed to escape um, before, lunch uh, before the end of lunchtime. So I've set the scene here. We're locked um, in a, a hotel in Madrid. We're locked in and the city's on lockdown, as if that would ever happen. Uh, we've got to crack the codes to get ourselves out. Uh, and it's collecting my email address, so we know that. So our first question, I've just brought a picture in from a, a live webcam from Madrid. Um, at 17.08 on Sunday, how many pedestrians were there in Madrid's Puerta del Sol Square? And the students would need to look really carefully at this picture and find the number of um, pedestrians and they can't move on until they get it right so it won't let them through the door to the next question so if they think well that's completely empty and they come and click next it just tells them that's incorrect because that's my incorrect answer um, custom response uh, if they think oh well, there might be a couple of people down there then again that's incorrect so if they look really carefully they might zoom right in and they might spot that just down here, there's one person. They might spot that that's one. And then they go to next and it takes them through to the next stage. So Mr. Santos is the hotel, the husband of the hotel owner. He's got these photo hanging by the door and next to it is this information. We know he's an animal lover. The door's got a colored button lock. Which buttons do we press? And obviously the students would need to be aware of their colors in Spanish. Uh, and they'd have to choose between red and green. So if they try red and green, sorry, you haven't got anywhere. It just takes you back again. If they try blue and green. Again, it just takes them back again. Here, red and blue, even though it's red there and blue there, I've just thrown that in to check the order for them, then they progress through. Here we're in reception and we can see the TV screen, but it's frozen. Could it be a clue? So we're looking for something that's going to unhelp us lock this room. Um, now we can see some players here with numbers on their back. So we might use those. So there's a number 11, there's a number 12, and there's a number 9. There we go. Oh, that's incorrecto. Wow, it's in Spanish as well. 
uh, or maybe as one of the other innovators suggested, maybe we need to identify who these other players are and work out their numbers. But that would be a real test. Uh, but if we look really carefully, we can see here that there's also a player with a number on his shorts there. So if we try adding a two, then it gets us through. We're almost through. So we're, now we're in the restaurant. Here's the menu. We're looking at the electronic touch screen. And we've got to make sure that we get ourselves a sandwich, ice cream and a drink, but we've only got 10 euros. We need to look at the menu and make sure we order the right things. Now, to just move us through, I'm going to tell you that that is that one there, which is a, a, a chorizo sandwich, vanilla ice cream and a Coke. And that gets us through there. And then we're almost out. Here we've got the fire exit sign messed up, so we're not sure which way we're supposed to go. The passage out is secured with a directional padlock, and we've got to choose which directions it will be. And the students would have to realise that the four famous chefs at the top here, Gordon Ramsay's looking left, this is looking right, Gino's pointing right, and this chap here is looking down. So we would choose that option, and then great we we would be getting this stage to submit it and it tells us well done you've escaped now go find help okay so that's the student side of it and then i then see all the responses here so we can see all the people well done to ritesh and chloe and andy and i should have escaped because i created it okay so that's how it works from that perspective if i come back to the questions we can show you how it works so here i just added a question and here i just said that the number must be equal to one and the message is going to be that's correct has to be a required question and then they can't move on unless they've got it right with section two we need to crack the door code again if you click on the answer here then i've got these three set as go to section based on answer like we did earlier on go to section based on answer and the wrong answers just take you back to the same section so you have to keep doing it until you get it right. And only answer three takes you on to the next section, which is called awesome, you're doing well. Here, we've got a numerical match. So it must equal the same number there exactly. And if you don't, you're gonna get that message. And then here with the restaurant, we just had to work out the numbers involved to make sure they added up to exactly 10. Uh, 10. And again, worked out as similar to the other one, an incorrect answer just takes you back and you go nowhere. The correct answer takes you here. And then finally, create all of these images, by the way, are created in Google drawings, just um, dragging them in from um, Google and things like that, and then just saved into the Google form. Uh, and then here, again, any of the wrong answers would just take you back again, but only the right answer would take you to submit form. And obviously, then the student gets the message that they've said they've been able to escape. Uh, and we've now got um, V Wills as well, who's managed to do so. Um, so here I've got my record of actually who's managed to do that. And I've used this in the past with students as an end of unit test where, say, for example, um, they need to know certain vocabulary or they need to know certain translations um, in Spanish to be able to put in exactly the right answers to be able to move through. And it makes a nice, fun end of unit test for them because they can't go any further without knowing the answers. And also it develops their resilience, uh, as Chloe will testify, because uh, she was getting quite, quite frustrated by uh, not being able to escape just before lunch.